part B of the question now. This T writes an equation representing the first law of thermodynamics and state clearly the meaning of each two. Now, thermodynamics is a branch of physics which deals with the energy and work done on a system. So work can be done on a system or it can be work done by a system, right? And they are telling you write an equation to represent the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics states that the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the energy supplied by the system plus the work done on the system. So over here, they want us to write an equation representing the first law of thermodynamics. So this is the equation that will represent the first law of thermodynamics. Good. So remember I told you it's the energy. The energy in the system is equal to the internal energy plus the work done on the energy. Sometimes you will see P delta V or you will see delta W. It's the same concept. It's the same work done on the system. So, and they want us to define each term. So delta Q will be the heat energy supplied. Delta U will be the increase in internal energy. And PdV or P delta V will be the work done by the gas on the surroundings. P is a constant pressure and delta V is the change in volume. So that is our first law of thermodynamics in an equation form, which says that the change in internal energy, or I could have said this, is equal to the heat supplied by the system plus the work done on the system. Good? So that is that part of the question. The next part of the question says the molar heat capacity. So this part of the question deals with molar heat capacity of a substance at constant volume, constant pressure, and work done on the system, right? So what is molar heat capacity at constant pressure, and what is molar heat capacity at constant volume? So for solids and liquids, you know we will talk about specific heat capacities. But for how at unit mass, because that's a mass of solid or liquid, right? But for gases, we don't consider unit mass. For gases, we consider moles, the temperature of a mole, which is N. So for, for molar heat capacity, in other words, molar heat capacity of a substance is the amount of thermal energy required to increase the temperature of one mole of it by one degree. So it's different to specific heat capacity. So the change in volume and the change in pressure is so small we can neglect it. But for a gas, it's larger. So that is why we have to incorporate it. So in other words, I'm telling you that the change, the temperature that can affect um, a gas can be based either at constant volume or constant pressure. So constant volume is represented by Cv and constant pressure is represented by Cp. So the molar heat capacity at constant pressure, Cp, is the amount of energy or heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of a gas by one degree when the pressure remains constant. Now for constant volume, it's the same thing, but the volume is remaining constant. So the molar heat capacity at constant volume, which is Cv, is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of gas by one degree, keeping the volume constant, right? So remember, I told you, before we answer this question, let's just look at some maps, right? So remember, I told you the first law of thermodynamics is this. Now, something that you need to know is when there, you say that work done is being done at constant volume, when work is being done at constant volume, then delta V is equal to zero. So if delta V is equal to zero, then the work will go to zero. So in physics, we say that work, when work is being done at constant volume, we don't have work. No work is being done because as you can see, it's going to zero. So at constant volume, we have no work being done in the system. So remember I told you constant volume, um, molar heat capacity at constant volume. This is our formula H. H is our heat energy or supply, so our H can be represented as delta Q divided by N delta T. 
n is again is our number of moles. So we will get delta Q is equal to delta U, which is equal to C V N delta T. As you notice, we don't have P, P delta V because it's going to zero. It's a constant volume. No work is being done. Now at constant pressure, it's the same thing. H, which is delta Q by N delta T. So we will get, if we cross multiply it, we will end up with H is equal to N delta T C P. Or if you want to write H is equal to C P N delta T. However, you choose to write it. However, easy for you to understand. You can write it. It's the same thing. So we will end up with, for our molar heat capacity, a constant pressure, you will end up with delta Q is equal to delta U plus P delta V, as I say, it could be P delta V, P D V, delta W, it's the same word being done, is equal to C P and delta T. So we will call this equation two. So this is equation one and this is equation two. So with a little algebra, if you go to rearrange all of this, because if delta Q is equal to this and delta Q is equal to this, all you can do is equate the equations. And when you equate the equation with the little algebra, you'll get CP minus CV is equal to R. And this here is a very important formula you will learn in physics when you are dealing with molar heat capacity at constant volume and molar heat capacity at constant pressure. CP minus CV is equal to R, which is our molar gas constant, providing that, and it's all the time, CP is always greater than CV, right? So let's answer our question now. So that was the theory behind answering this question. So they said the mo So now that I'm reading, you will know what is CP and CV. So the molar heat capacity, a constant volume of a gas, is the quantity of thermal energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of the gas by one Kelvin without any change in volume. How much thermal energy will be required to raise the temperature of 6.2 mole, so that 6.2 mole is N, of a gas from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. So you can see there's a change in temperature from 25 to 50. So you have to find delta T. So it will be 50 minus 25, which is 25, while the volume remain constant. So they give you CV. So CV and CP is always constant. It will usually be, for, if not given in the equation, in the question like this, it's in the, the formula sheet of your exam. Usually it's the first or second page in your exam paper, right? So how much thermal energy will be required to raise the temperature of 6.2 mole of gas from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius? So this is how we will answer this question. So I talked about all the equations earlier on. This equation, right? So it's a constant volume. So we are dealing with that equation to answer this question. So we get H. H is delta Q, our entire energy in the system, is equal to NCV delta T. They told us N is equal to 6.2 mole, and they told us that the change in temperature was 50 degrees Celsius minus 25 degrees Celsius, and we will get 25 degrees Celsius. We know CV in the question they gave us that, that is a constant, which is 12.5 joules per Kelvin per mole, and all you have to do in order to get H, because that is what the question is asking us, they are asking us to find the heat energy required there at constant volume. All you have to do is multiply, so N, which is 6.2, multiply by CV, 12.5, multiply by our change in temperature, which is 25, and then H will give us 1,940 joules. Remember, energy is measured in joules. So that is how we will answer this part of the question, how thermal energy will be, how much thermal energy. So that is the amount of thermal energy that will be required to raise the temperature of this amount of moles from 25 degrees to 50. Then the other part of the question says, by how much would the internal energy of the gas change? So now that you are seeing by how much the internal energy of the gas will change, you will think you have to go do a calculation. 
but no remember it is at constant volume so if it has constant volume then no work is being done on the surroundings and if no work is being done on the surroundings then delta q is equal to delta u because delta pdv goes to zero so delta q is equal to delta u or delta u is equal to delta q so then all the heat energy supplied is equal to the internal energy because there is no work being done so so since the volume is kept constant then no work is being done on the surroundings so all heat supplied goes to increase the internal energy so the increase in the internal energy will still be 1940 because remember delta q is equal to delta u plus p delta v constant volume it goes to zero so delta q is equal to delta u remember i tell you h is delta q so delta q is equal to delta u so 1940 joule that will be the same amount of internal energy in that system so that is how you will answer this question now part c says if instead the gas were heated at constant pressure now from 25 so the same change in temperature the thermal energy required would be 3200 joules how much work would be done on the gas in this case so this case it's constant pressure so if it's constant pressure we have work being done on the system or by the system in the surroundings right work is being done so remember our first law of thermodynamics delta q is equal to delta u plus p delta v so they want us to find the work done so they want us to find p delta v so all you have to do is rearrange this equation so delta u plus p delta v is equal to delta q p delta v is equal to delta q minus delta u remember they told us that delta q now is 3200 joules and we found our delta q from earlier which is the same internal energy that is why they ask us what will be the internal energy if you realize all the questions are linked so now that we found the internal energy and they gave us the new delta q all we need to do is pdv which will be our work done will be 3200 joules minus 1940 and our work done will be 1260 joules so that is how simple answering these questions are even though it's long and wordy once you know your formula it's very easy to answer and the last part of the question says deduce the volume of cp the molar heat capacity of the gas at constant pressure so this part of the question is very simple remember earlier on when i showed you that we can use constant uh, molar heat capacity at constant volume let me just get it back here good remember i showed you guys the molar heat capacity at constant volume and the molar heat capacity at constant pressure and when we rearrange it we'll get cp minus cv is equal to r r is our molar gas constant now they are asking us to find cp and they gave us cv in the question earlier on so if you need to find cp and r is a constant and v is a constant all you need to do is cp minus cv is equal to r um our so we want to find cp so r plus cp cp is equal to r which is our molar gas constant 8.31 by cv which was 12.5 from the question and we'll get cp is equal to 20.81 joules per kelvin per mole and that there is how you would deduce the value of cp and have another way you can also find cp right cp is the molar heat capacity at constant pressure you can also use the formula as 
we were using earlier on saying that CP is equal to H on N delta T. Remember I told you that CP is equal to H on N delta T. Or we can say CP is equal to delta Q divided by N delta T. We had our mole which was 6.2. The change in temperature was 50 minus 25 which would give you 25. And delta Q, they told us 3200. So all you have to do, this is our next way of finding same CP, but this way is usually more substitution, right? So all you have to do is 3200 divided by 6.2 by delta T, which was 25. And it wouldn't give you the exact same figure, but it will be close due to rounding off. And you would have gotten 20.65 joules per Kelvin per mole. And, and you can see it's 20.81, 20.65. So that's two ways of finding CP. And that there is good have gotten you 10 marks. And in total, this entire question is 20 marks. Thank you very much uh, this question. For those of you who want to register for the crash courses, you can go to the entire crash course at Miss here. You just uh, WhatsApp the admin at 7840619 and you can join her crash course. It's only 200 TT. Um, or you can pay one 1000 TT and get access to her full course that she did throughout the year. So, till we meet again, love and blessings. Thank you again. Bye, guys.